Hey guys, Fix It John here. Today we're going to be replacing this uh, lap board and all. It's got, it has a crack in it right here, and I don't want want water to run down in here and uh, wick back up into this crack and uh, ruin our uh, structure of our uh, home. And all it is is a veneer, you know, like it would like uh, like the bricks of veneer, uh, vinyl siding, veneer, something like that. That's all it is. It's just to keep the weather off the house. So let's get to work here and I'll show you what we have to do. So all I'm using here is a uh, little pry bar. You could use a uh, screwdriver or anything to get this piece of wood out of here. Well, this looks like cedar to me. Uh, I'm not going to go back over it with cedar. I'm going to go over it with some uh, pressure treated. This looks like it has a beveled edge on it. It's more like a clapboard. And uh, this is a uh, this uh, felt paper. This is a uh, water retardant. on there so your building will breathe so let's cut a board and uh, so we can replace this uh, clapboard uh, it's nailed directly to the framing there's no sheeting up under this this is hollow wall with insulation behind it all right guys I got my board here I'm gonna uh, got it measured out I'm gonna use it as my template here it's the same width, and I'm just going to scribe a line down this side, and then down this side. Uh, now, when cutting cutting wood, I want to show you, you just don't want to cut anyway. Uh, like I was saying, I'll, I'll show you on this piece of wood. You want to look for the crown of the board. See how it bows up like this at the top? You want to cut it so this side is facing the wall. See how it bows in? Now this is pretty good, well and dried. Uh, this is what will happen. Uh, I want you to know how to tell the crown of the wood. I'll show you how to tell the crown of the board. If you can see the rings, see the rings on this side? How they go up? That's called your smiley face. This side is the inside of the tree. This side is the bark side. You always want bark side down. Here is a uh, piece of uh, pressure treated uh, fencing I made a gate out of and I kept the scrap wood. But if you look at it, see that smiley face up. That's another piece of wood. The crown here would be on the inside of the tree. The bark on this side. This is the bark side. Or uh, fascia board. Uh, I installed some fascia board. Uh, I don't know if I remember, uh, neglected to tell you guys that, but uh, I hope you didn't do your fascia board before you learned this lesson here. So yeah, putting the wood on properly could give you many years, 20 years or longer of service. Uh, make a mental note of that guys and uh, try to do it right the first time. Hey guys, this is all I'm gonna use to bevel the edge of that. Uh, put me a pair of safety glasses on, I will, and uh, I'm gonna use this cutoff tool with this sanding uh, disc on there. All right guys, this is what I wound up with. This is my piece of uh, clapboard, lapboard, whatever you wanna call it. I. Uh, all right, guys, here we are with the uh, clapboard. What this clapboard does, it nails directly to the uh, studs. There's no uh, sheeting under it. When I say sheeting, I mean like uh, plywood. Now, being this is uh, pressure treated, I'm going to come along and paint it. But uh, I've had it weathering out in the weather for about three or four months. And you'll want to do that before you paint it. Otherwise, when you paint it, uh, the paint will bubble off of it. 
and I'll go over all my pressure treated with an oil-based primer and then I'll come come back over that with a water-based paint all right guys fix it John here uh, I'm not proud of this but uh, this is my second board I tried to nail straight through this uh, pressure treated pine and it split it and I knew better but I was in a hurry and I just wanted to hurry up and do it and uh, the more I nailed the more it split so I, I wasn't happy with myself there so I went ahead and made a new board it's a completely different board or pre-drill it got me smaller nails now if I was using uh, the air gun it would definitely go in a lot easier but Okay guys, what I got here is a punch, and I'm just gonna use that to countersink these uh, nails. That way I can get some caulk over them and some paint. I got one more spot I'm gonna put some wood up there. Uh, I'm gonna use a uh, fence, uh, fence slat and cut that out, cause that'll be long enough. Uh, and put that up there a uh, squirrel was getting in there a little uh, uh, little flying squirrels living up there and that's what I think those marks are uh, flying squirrel poo poo hey guys yeah. fix it John here today I'm uh, pressure cleaning the house because I'm gonna paint it uh, the paints getting old and dried out and uh, doesn't have any flex to it anymore so before you paint a house you want to uh, pressure clean it that way you get all the grime and dirt off of it and mold now it had some mold on it you don't want to paint over top of that otherwise your paint will peel uh, uh, and you, you don't want your paint to peel you want it to stick so I'm gonna finish pressure cleaning the side of this house and we'll get to work hey guys fix it John here uh, I got to work and prepping the house for some painting and uh, there was like a uh, two by eight that was rotted so I had to rip that out and uh, this this board here is rotted too I'll have to cut it off see where it's rotted at the bottom of the uh, window seal right here at the bottom so what I'll do is uh, instead of replacing that whole freaking board I'm just going to cut me a new piece uh, just above that window seal here. Cut it across here. And this clapboard's uh, had a rotten spot there. I'm trying to patch it. I may just buy a whole new board. But uh, yeah, I got hung up into some other stuff. Remember, I replaced that piece there. Uh, we're gonna paint it and we don't want the wood rotted so and I didn't find any flashing up under this uh, uh, window seal here there's the board rotted it out at the ends I, I dug that out to see how bad it was but uh, that's cedar and uh, the rest of it's the wood here in the center is pretty good. There's rotted down here at this end It's got a little bit of rot right here where the water ran into it where there was no flashing But I'm gonna use part of this wood for uh, those end pieces hey guys fix it John here back on the back patio uh, We've got some paint chipping here. and We also have some uh, stucco cracking and I'm gonna use some uh, stucco patch to uh, patch that up. And uh, it's an acrylic based uh, stucco patch. And we'll patch these holes up and uh, resurface it with that stucco patch. It really does a good job. Let me show you what I have here. This, uh, I picked it up at uh, the hardware store, Ready Mix Stucco Patch. So, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that. Sica, uh, Sica Creole, whatever. There's uh, 
I used it on the other side of the house so far and uh, it dried nicely and it really looks like the same stucco. I'll show you when I get back around there. But what we're going to do here is we're going to scrape this paint off per first. Take a chisel, a uh, screwdriver, something sharp, and if you see this little uh, hairline crack, you just want to make it bigger. Follow that crack. That way your stucco compound will get in that hole and uh, during uh, expansion and contraction, it'll have, it'll have, uh, something to hold to and it'll be able to expand and contract a little bit without recreating this crack here so all right guys uh, I like to take this uh, this little putty knife here and push it into the cracks and then I'm gonna have to come along with the big one again and go over it So to make it look like it's stuccoed, just take a uh, small putting knife and just run it randomly. Put a mark there and just scrape it up a little bit. But now I'm going to take my brush. A little stucco on the end of it. Hey guys, fix it, John. I scraped that. Uh, that was a size, uh, probably about. Well, let me show you. It was a bare spot here, only this this spot here, and it was bare for quite a long time. And uh, I scraped the paint off that was relatively easy to get off. Uh, the other paint that's on there pretty good. So, you know, you, you want to scrape the paint that comes off easily. Hey guys, fix it John back at you. What we got here is a uh, corner bead here rotten, rotten out, rotten out. And what happens is this is a uh, galvanized mesh material similar to this right here. Uh, but this is galvanized and what happens is uh, water uh, is wicked up from the ground through the uh, concrete and it, it uh, gets to this uh, galvanized mesh material that they use to uh, stucco the house and that rusts out and then it just sort of balloons out, rust, uh, expands and cracks the uh, stucco out. So what I did was uh, I chipped it out best I could. This is a tight spot here only because of the uh, full cage. And what what I got, they had the uh, they had the uh, corner bead uh, galvanized, but I, I didn't want to use that. I got this stuff here and cut it down. What you do is hold it uh, in place best you can, and uh, let's see if it'll take one of these roofing nails. It's going in, but it's taking a Herculean effort. So we got All right, guys, I got it all on here. I'm just finishing it up with this uh, brush, giving it a few light taps. All right, there you have it. All the way down. 
can't see the PVC uh, corner bead. Uh, see right here, that is, uh, that's corner bead which is uh, galvanized and it's not rusting up here. Hey guys, fix it John here. Uh, this is what I've gotten done so far on this wood repair. Uh, as you know, I found this wood that was rotted under here. This board here was all the way across to that end there. It was rotted. And I salvaged some, and this this here was rotted too. So I cut this piece out with my circular saw and uh, replaced it from the uh, some good parts of the wood that I found that was salvageable out of this board here. So I cut it and I nailed it to this because I didn't want to replace this whole beam all the way up to the top there. I, I'll, I'll sand this down and caulk it and fill it in and you, you'll never know I've uh, patched it there. Now I do have a uh, two by eight pressure treated that I'm gonna put under here. To work. I had to remove some of that uh, cedar lap siding so I could make my cut here. Otherwise I would have cut into the lap siding here, so. Hey guys, I gotta cut this at uh, 84, uh, 84 inches and three quarters. I also got me some uh, drip edge so the edge of the board doesn't rot out. And I'll place that drip edge on top of that so the water will run off. This is smiley face up. So we want to set, due to crowning, we want to set this part out because uh, with weather and uh, expansion contraction, this this board will want to have it. This this board here will have a tendency to crown out. Otherwise, it'll crown in. Right now, it has a slight crown to this side, but over time, this side is and and that's the way it was stacked. But over time, it's going to have a tendency to crown. Hey this. guys, fix it, John. I went all out and bought some uh, aluminum siding nails, uh, just like roofing nails, because I didn't want to use two dissimilar metals uh, with my uh, with my uh, drip edge here. This is aluminum, and I put the drip edge on here so it won't rot out like the other hey one. Hey guys, did. fix it John. This is what I have left to do. I've uh, cut three clapboards and I need to grind them down so they're uh, angled and they'll fit up under one another. Uh, this is what I have. This is my drip edge that I put on. Took me a while to get it level but it's as good as it's going to get. And I'll fill this in with caulk and uh, sand it down a little bit so you can't tell it. And uh, once I put a couple coats of paint on it, you won't even be able to notice it. Hey guys, Fix It John here. Uh, what we're doing now is we're priming this uh, rake board. Uh, and we're using an oil-based uh, uh, primer paint. Uh, I had it tinted, so when I put the paint on it, it'll cover better. Usually it comes in white, but if you have it tinted to the color you want, uh, it your paint will... Uh, cover a whole lot better so this is the oil based primer hey guys fix it john here i just wanted to show you the house after i got it all uh primed and painted it's been a, it's been a couple of months just doing a little look at uh how the paint's holding up now if you remember that's oil based primer up there on that uh, rake board and it's oil based primer on uh that fascia board there and the reason why you use oil based primer I used oil based primer is that is uh, that's pressure treated wood there and there's a chemical that'll leach out of that wood and uh, cause a latex primer to peel so what you do once you install it uh, it's best to leave it uh, weather out a little bit they call it and uh, I also used oil base on the gutters there and it, it's been a couple months nothing peeling uh, the house is uh, real good shape. I also had uh, right there a little squirrel that would enter our house. I called him in a trap and uh, covered that up with some uh, mesh wire. Now I left that mesh wire there and I covered that up with uh, like a trim board. 
and the reason why in case he came back to chew that chew that board off uh, that uh, wire mesh would be under it hiding hiding the hole i didn't replace that board i just added a uh, trim board over it and this side's painted trim too so i'll try not to bore you this is the front end here remember the uh the board down here that was rotted i replaced it and uh, put some flashing on it. Now, if you remember this spot here, this is where I cut the board, uh, I sealed it and uh, sanded it and painted it. So, I mean, it's really not that noticeable. Uh, I didn't have any boards to replace on this side. They were all solid. And then uh, this clapboard. Uh, you can tell a little bit that uh, it's it doesn't match the uh, roughness and the ruggedness of the other boards, but I didn't spend a whole lot of money for it either. It's just a pressure treated board sanded down as a clapboard. Uh, I did replace this right here, this part right here, because it was rotted, this board down here. Uh, the only uh, bad spot was probably putting a joint right under the uh, drip edge here, but I sealed it, knowing that, I sealed it up real well to keep uh, any water from getting in. And there it is from a distance. my fan running up there I installed fix some stucco down here at the bottom and uh, did a little rake board there replace that rake board and I closed in that hole so animals couldn't get in it right here I had some stucco uh, peeling off and I scraped all that off and uh, put some uh, more stucco on it. Some of that synthetic uh, stucco you saw me using. Back off it so you can. So that's all nice and clean and not peeling. Try to remember what I've done here. Oh, I did change the color of the door. I painted it white. I know I didn't show you brush by brush stroke, but uh, I primed all this and uh, painted it. And right in here by the uh, faucet, uh, there was some uh, peeling stucco. And right there on the edge where I uh, scraped that out. And right here, guys, I don't know if you remember, uh, I got a little sloppy with the paint, but uh, right here I had to knock that rusted uh, bead board out and I replaced that with that uh, PVC bead board, uh, not bead board, PVC corner. And I covered that up with that synthetic stucco. That new bead board, it's hard as a rock. Good job there. So hopefully we'll get 10 years out of this uh, paint job. I really don't want to paint it. I did use Sherwin-Williams, uh, not top notch, but I think it was uh, called 101. Still, still looks good, but it's only been a couple months. Trim that out, that was orange. So yeah, and I had some bad spots around the uh, fireplace chase here. You see this chase. Uh, 
I did some uh, stucco work around here. It's a vent for the uh, fireplace chase. my redneck fix right there on that uh, it's an old door it's rusted at the bottom so I didn't uh, I didn't worry with it too much coming on around here uh, right here at this uh, faucet I had to do quite a bit of uh, stucco scraping that was uh, peeling off and I refinished it and then uh, primed it with some uh, concrete block primer and painted a water-based primer. Anytime you prime uh, block, you want to go water-based. There you have it, guys. Took me about uh, two and a half weeks. Closer to three weeks. Pressure cleaned it, replaced all the rotted wood, and uh, prime and paint what I needed. Hey guys, Fix It John here. This is the uh, paint I used to uh, paint the house. This uh, it's uh, from Sherwin Williams called A100. Uh, it's not the uh, top of the line they have there, but uh, I'm gonna tell you, it's better than what the best, the big box stores can offer. Uh, Sherwin Williams has always been a quality paint. I'm not getting paid for this endorsement. I just don't want you guys to make a mistake that I've made. Uh, when I, 20 years ago when I met my wife, she always wanted to go to Sherwin Williams to buy paint. And I'm like, why do you want to go to the fancy store? Well, she wanted to go there because the uh, paint is better quality and she can get a lot better information from their help there than you can from the big box store. Uh, I'm sure that they have good paint there at the big box store, but uh, if you get on uh, some of these uh, forums with uh, the painters, they talk about flowability and the quality of uh, paint. And uh, one guy even said the woman insisted on this particular paint from a big box store and he charged her more to put it on because it's harder to apply. It may be thicker, but the flowability is not as good. Uh, I'm not a paint expert and I don't claim to be, but uh, this is just some of my experience. Uh, we bought a Murphy bed. Uh, oh yeah, by the way, to paint this whole house for paint, uh, the primer I use, the, uh, I use some uh, oil-based primer and some water-based primer, several gallons. Uh, this was with the price 30% uh, off to paint the whole house. I also bought some uh, disposable oil-based uh, paint brushes. Uh, it was uh, 1120 bucks. I go there because several years ago we bought a Murphy bed and uh, we put it together, we sanded it, we put it together, it was gonna be perfect. So we go into Sherwin-Williams and uh, they asked, what do we have, what kind of wood, da da da, and uh, we told them and the, uh, and the lady said, oh, you, you want some oil-based stain. I'm like, no, we don't want oil-based stain because right here in the directions, the manufacturer's directions, it says to sand it and use water-based stain. So I insisted on water-based. Come home. It was all sanded, ready to go. We put the oil-based or the uh, water-based stain on it and it streaked. It looked like crap. I mean, it just streaked all over. And uh, th there's no way we were gonna put it up. And uh, so what we ended up doing was letting that dry, going back to Sherwin-Williams, told them what I did wrong. <laughs> I didn't listen to the, uh, to the clerk. Well, we bought a uh, paint and we painted over it after all that work, sanding. So uh, another scenario is uh, after I uh, installed the uh, fascia board and the rake board, I thought I was ready to paint. So I go down to Sherwin-Williams and I tell them uh, I need uh, a bunch of paint to paint my house. And the lady said, she asked, what am I painting? What am I doing? I said, I have some, 
I have some pressure treated uh, fascia board and rake board that I need to paint. And she says, how long has it been up? I said, oh, I just put it up. <laughs> it's ready to paint. And she said, no, you're not ready to paint. She, she wanted me, uh, she would, she would have sold me the paint, but she's like, you're not ready to paint for uh, several months because what happens is the, uh, the pressure treated board, it'll leach a chemical out and the uh, paint and the uh, paint will be pushed out by the leaching of that chemical. So she wanted me to let it dry. I mean, I'd let it dry, but she wanted me to let it weather. So the, uh, the uh, primer would be absorbed into the wood uh, which made sense to me but uh, I have read on blogs where uh, painters have after it's dried after the pressure treated wood is dried they've painted uh, uh, with the oil base so anytime you're going over uh, pressure treated wood always go over it with an oil based primer I wasn't gonna make the second mistake twice again by not listening to the help at Sherwin Williams so I decided not to paint for several months until the uh, pressure treated wood would uh, weather out. Uh, now, oil base will have a lot better chance of adhering to the pressure treated wood before it weathers out, but after it dries. And she wasn't comfortable enough to sell the paint to me and paint the house and then in uh, two or three months, it start flaking off and peeling off. And I appreciate that from Sherwin Williams and I won't buy my paint anywhere else, so. Oh yeah, one more thing I forgot to mention. We know paint on the shelf won't last forever, but it opens up here at the top. If you store your paint upside down, it'll last a lot longer because air won't seep into it. The paint will go around this, uh, the, the lid here and seal that up so air won't get into the uh, paint and dry it out. Same way with this bucket here. Just flip it over. So if you guys like this video, like and subscribe and give me a thumbs up. It moves me up in the rankings and I appreciate you watching. Bye-bye.